Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with crispy oven roasted breakfast potatoes. That's right, if they're not hash browns and they're not home fries, and we serve them for breakfast or brunch, in the business, we simply call them breakfast potatoes. But do not let this generic name fool you. These really are incredible. And besides the amazing taste and texture, since we're doing these in the oven, we're freeing up valuable stove space for cooking whatever other breakfast items we're going to serve with these. So to summarize, these excel on several levels. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is peel a couple pounds of potatoes. And my favorite variety would be the Yukon Gold which for this preparation I think are the best in the flavor department. But as far as crispiness goes, they're only the second best choice, since it's a proven scientific fact that russet potatoes will get a little bit crispier. But having said that, they still get beautifully crispy and crusty. And the only potato I would actually avoid is the red potato, which just never really gets or stays really crispy. And then once we have our potatoes peeled, if they're this size, we can just go ahead and cut them in quarters. Okay, if they're twice as big, cut them in eighths. And if they're half the size, cut them in half. So what I'm trying to say is, once they're cut, it would really be great if they were about this size. Okay, a little bigger would be fine, as would a little bit smaller. But if they're too small, they might fall apart during the next step, which is to boil these tender in a very, very specific way. So we'll go ahead and cut those as shown and leave them in the water until we're ready to use them. And once those are set, we can head to the stove where we will bring some nice fresh cold water up to a boil, probably on high heat. And to the water we will definitely add some salt, as well as the key to the whole operation, a little bit of baking soda. Oh yeah, we're going to raise the pH up in here. So we'll go ahead and add those in. And like I said, we'll wait for this to come to a boil, which yes, is different to how we usually do boiled potatoes. Since I'll normally have you add those to the cold water and bring everything up to a boil together, but here, to get the optimum chemical reaction we're looking for, we want to have the water boiling before we add our potatoes in. So once our water is at a nice rolling boil, we will very carefully add our cut potatoes in, and then we'll adjust our heat to maintain a nice steady simmer, right, probably somewhere around medium, and we will cook these potatoes for about 10 to 12 minutes, or until they're just barely tender, but not falling apart. And of course, exact times are going to depend on the exact size. And since we're always trying to multitask, while our potatoes are cooking, we might as well mix together our flavored oil with which we're going to coat these potatoes before we roast them. Which for me starts with some olive oil, although pretty much any oil or fat's going to work. And then to that we will add a little bit of garlic powder, as well as some onion powder, plus a nice spoon of paprika. And I'm using smoked paprika, because as I like to say, it is the bacon of spices. And then we'll finish up with some freshly ground black pepper, plus a few shakes of cayenne just to stay in shape. And that's it, we'll take a whisk and give this a quick mix. And this is now ready for our cooked and drained potatoes, which we should go check on. And again, the exact time is gonna vary, so make sure you're testing these with the tip of a knife when you think you're getting close. And right here, mine were almost, but not quite there. So I gave them another minute or two. And then what we'll do once these are tender is go ahead and carefully pour those into a strainer and we'll let them drain for about 30 seconds. And then we'll carefully add those to our flavored oil. And we'll begin tossing those with a spatula. And we will keep tossing them until a couple things happen. Okay, first and most obvious, we want to toss these until they're evenly coated with those seasonings. And then secondly, we want to toss these until the surface of the potato starts to look a little bit furry. Okay, it's almost like as you stir these, a layer of mashed potato is going to form on the surface. And that's because when you boil potatoes with a little bit of baking soda, it raises the pH of the water, which breaks down the surface of the potato, which is basically what's creating the appearance of overcooked potatoes. But they're not. The potatoes are perfectly tender. It is just a layer on the surface of the potato that's getting a little mushy, which I described earlier as looking furry. But anyway, it's this starchy, roughed up surface on the potato that's going to create all the amazing crispiness once these are roasted. And that's it, once these have been tossed, we will transfer those onto a parchment paper lined baking sheet, and we will distribute and space those as evenly as possible. And as you finish this up, you're gonna notice what looks like oily mashed potatoes in the bowl. Do not discard that. Just go ahead and spread that over the tops of the potatoes, here and there, and that's actually gonna fuse to the surface and make these even crustier. And that's it, before we roast these, I like to give them a light sprinkling of salt. 
But of course, that is optional, so you decide. And that's it. These are now ready to transfer into the center of a 450-degree oven for 20 minutes, at which point we're going to pull them out and turn them over. And while they're still not even close, they've already started to crisp up a little bit. So, so far, so good. And that's it. Once those have all been flipped over, we'll go ahead and pop those back in for another 20 minutes, at which point, you guessed it, we're going to give them another flip. And by now, they're looking even better and more crispy. But we have a little more roasting to do. Okay, we'll go ahead and flip these back over. And then we'll pop them back in for another, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. It's really going to depend on how they look and feel. But basically, we're just going to continue roasting those until we think they're done. Oh, and while those finish roasting, one optional step I like to do is to saute some onions and peppers in olive oil with a nice big pinch of salt. Since when I make home fries, I do like to add a little pepper and onion to the mix. But since I think the potatoes get crispier if we roast them alone, I'm just going to do these separately and then use this almost like a relish to garnish later. And once my onions have turned translucent and turned a little bit golden brown, and those peppers have kind of softened and sweetened, what I'll do is turn off the heat and stir in a handful of freshly sliced green onions, and the residual heat in the pan will soften those up, and that's it, I'll simply reserve those until needed. And by the way, if you don't feel like scattering these on your potatoes as a garnish, feel free to scramble those right into your eggs, or do both. Nobody says you can't do both. And that's it. My optional garnish is done. As are my potatoes. So let me go ahead and pull those out and show you what they look like. And by look like, of course, I mean sound like. Okay, check it out. Oh, yeah, those are crispy and extremely crusty, which means we can go ahead and transfer those into some kind of serving platter. And if we made it, we can top it with our onions and peppers, which in real life I would put more. But as you know, I got to take some contractually obligated pictures and did not want to hide these gloriously beautiful potatoes. So I just put a little bit. And then since I had them, I scattered over a few fresh chives. And that's it. My crispy oven roasted breakfast potatoes were ready to enjoy. And for me, the perfect roasted potato, breakfast or otherwise, Features a very crispy, very crusty exterior, wrapped around a perfectly tender, very creamy center. And that, my friends, is exactly what we have here. And as far as the flavor goes, since I went with my classic home fries seasoning mix, to me these taste exactly like what breakfast potatoes are supposed to taste like. And since we did use the Yukon Gold, which do have a little bit of a sweeter flavor profile to a russet potato, I think that works especially well with those spices we chose. And by the way, it's probably obvious, but as long as you use the same technique and you boil your potatoes with that salt and a little bit of baking soda, you can season and flavor these any way you want. I mean, you are after all the MIT grad of making these rad. Oh, and speaking of graduates from MIT, I need to thank Kenji and all the friends I've never met at Series Eats who did all the painstaking work and multiple experiments to basically perfect this technique So people like you and I would not have to do all that work and could simply enjoy the outstanding results. So a sincere thanks to them. And that's it to finish up. Let me go ahead and show you these in their natural habitat, sitting next to some kind of breakfast food, like a couple perfect sunny side up eggs, for example. And with apologies to a certain guy on TV, there is no crispy roasted breakfast potato that is not better dipped in an egg yolk. And again, the great thing about doing these in the oven is that if you're cooking breakfast or brunch for a group, you need every single burner possible for your eggs and your bacon or whatever else you're making. So above and beyond all the other benefits, that really is a nice advantage. But whether you make these for breakfast or brunch, or just as a side dish because you thought they'd be nice for lunch, no matter when or how you serve them, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.